Namaste. So let's talk about the deep insights in chapters 15 and 16 of the Srishti Khanda, of the Rudra Sanghita, of the Shiva Purana. Now, these are actually the last two chapters that describe creation. Srishti, the name of this section, means creation. But these two chapters uh, really finish the story of creation, at least in this section of Shiva Purana. And they cover primarily the first and second order creations. Now, we covered the creation in much more detail back in the Lakshmi Tantra series. But here, really just a summary is given. Basically what happens is that after the fight between Brahma and Vishnu and the manifestation of Shiva as the unlimited Linga, then after they were instructed by Shiva and initiated into Aumkar Mantra, then they began the actual work of creation. So what happened was that Brahma created a mystic egg, the Hiranyagarbha. In fact, sometimes Brahma is called Hiranyagarbha because he is pretty much identical with this mystic egg. And this is the latent form of all the different beings and species and planets and so on in the universe. So this egg manifests and then it gestates for a long time on the causal ocean. See, this is all happening on a very subtle level, a very uh, abstract level of creation. But then when the egg cracks open due to being hit by Rudra, <laughs> then Brahma becomes the top and Vishnu becomes the bottom, the worlds, the earth, and like that. And Brahma becomes the center, the living beings. So then in the next chapter, chapter 16, Brahma asks Vishnu, please enter into this cosmic egg and make it conscious, make it sentient. In other words, bring it to life. And so Vishnu, having been empowered by Shiva specifically to do this, enters into the egg in uncountable forms, different kinds of forms. And as described, he has unlimited eyes, heads, hands, legs, and so forth. So he actually manifests as all the bodies of all the living creatures in the universe. They are actually Vishnu. Then, this, this is the first order creation. The second order creation is the creation of the demigods. Brahma has mental sons. The first five, the four Kumaras and Narada, do not wish to participate in the creation of the universe. They remain renounced and detached and they are only uh, after liberation. So because of this, Brahma becomes very angry. And from the uh, spot between his eyebrows, Rudra emanates. Rudra is anger. The motive, Tamoguna. Tamoguna means anger, destruction, enmity, ignorance, all these things. So now we have three demigods, and then the three demigods, Brahma, Vishnu, and Rudra, they all get consorts, shaktis. Why is this? So that they have the energy to do their work. This is also described 
back in our long, uh, deep section on Sri Vidya, because all the Shaktis are necessary. The powers are necessary. Otherwise, the different gods can't do anything. They have intelligence, but they need power. So this power is in the form of their wives. Then they create offspring by combination, sexual combination and regeneration. So in other words, Brahma is the grandfather, Pitamaha. And from him are descended all the living beings in the universe. With Vishnu acting as their bodies and Rudra acting as the coverings that delude them into thinking that they are material entities. So this is how the creation takes place. And there are many other orders of creation after this one. But this describes the pretty much the top level. Now, I've brought this up several times in these discussions. How it is that people can uh, watch these spiritual insight videos without watching the chapter videos. It's like inconceivable to me. Context determines meaning. And if you're not aware of the context of the chapters of Shiva Purana, the meaning of these comments is going to be lost on you. You're not going to get it. And from what I've seen, people aren't getting it. They're not making intelligent comments. I mean, on every single page of Shiva Purana, there is some controversial or esoteric or difficult point that needs clarification. But I don't see people asking for clarification. You know, I don't know whether you just, just don't care, huh? or you're just watching these for some kind of entertainment, or something like that. That's not the right reason to watch these videos. You should be watching these videos to understand and to get the background knowledge for your spiritual practice leading to liberation. That's what they're for. That's what they're all about. So if people are not watching the chapter videos, or at least they're watching them maybe halfway, you know, the average view is about five minutes. <laughs> it's kind of pathetic, really. How do you expect to understand this knowledge? How do you expect to attain self-realization without the background and the practices? So the practices are actually more important than the knowledge. If you do the practices, you'll get the result because God is fair. But from what I've seen and the lack of inquiry about it, people aren't even doing that. And it's really sad. It's a shame. I've been up in the mountains, in the Himalayas, doing these practices intensively now for months. And I got very quick results. See the video on merging with Shiva. See, so normally this takes like a whole lifetime or even several lifetimes, but it manifested very quickly for me. Why? Because I have the discipline of learning the background and then doing the practices. Context and then the content. The content has more meaning when the context is known and complete. So the more complete your background knowledge is, the more potent your practices will be. I don't know why nobody understands this. I don't know why I'm not getting, after each one of these videos, detailed questions about the uh, vague points in some of these chapters. I mean, I just don't get it. Let me tell you a story. I was in Thailand 
And I went to Thailand specifically to inquire into Buddha's teaching of Paticca Samupada. Uh, I was in Spain, and my partner at the time, Rani, showed me some writings by uh, Buddha Das Bhikkhu on Paticca Samupada. And right away I knew, oh, this is an incredible, powerful secret. I have to learn this. So we went to Thailand. We got, literally got on a plane within like two weeks of finding this out. Took a while to arrange everything, you know, and store all our stuff and whatever. And we went to Thailand to Buddha Das Bhikkhu's monastery. And we were very disappointed to find that Buddha Das Bhikkhu's followers did not continue his uh, deep investigations. So we were lamenting about what to do and asking different people, and we found out about Jnanananda. Jnanananda, I've done several videos about him, several series about his teachings about Nibbana. As soon as I read, I mean, I read one page of Jnanananda's books, I knew I have to meet, I have to, I have to take lessons from him. And I mean, literally, we canceled the house that we were going to rent, lost our deposit, didn't matter. We were out of there within three days. And we arrived in Sri Lanka on Christmas Day of, nine, of 2012. I remember it well. And stayed in this same room where I'm staying right now. This is... Dedication. This is taking initiative. When you find a teacher who is giving something deeper than you have ever encountered before, if you're not on the next plane, you're a loser. I'll come right out and say it. You're an idiot. You're missing a great opportunity. You're wasting your time, wasting your life, and wasting this great teacher. If you don't take the initiative to approach a great teacher once you've identified them and do whatever it takes to get lessons from them, you're going to lose that opportunity. Spiritual life is based on the principle of use it or lose it. If you're given an opportunity and you don't jump on it, it's going to evaporate. Believe me, I know from experience. As a creative artist, for example, so many times I'll wake up in the middle of the night, literally, with an inspiration. And I know from countless experiences, if I don't write it down or make some notes or do a recording or something to uh, give that idea some legs, it's going to evaporate. And by morning, it's going to be gone. You say, oh, I'll do something about it in the morning. No, no, you won't. Because it's going to be gone. Inspiration from God hits like a lightning bolt. It comes quickly and it goes quickly. Don't waste it. If you get the call, huh? we discussed this way back in the beginning of this channel, the call of the friend. If you get the call of the friend, you have to act on it. Because if not, it means you don't value it. You don't care about it. So God is going to say, oh, okay, you don't really want it? I'll take it back. And then you're stuck. So please take my advice. If you find this inspiring, if you find any of these teachings confusing, ask questions. Arrange your life in such a way that you can take direct lessons from someone who knows. That is the quickest and most direct route to complete self-realization. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.